Welcome to Tony Burns View with news you can use. Tony has over 32 years of experience as a chartered financial planner and wealth manager. Tony's passion is to help you retire early and live the life of your dreams with no financial worries. Now to today's episode. Why do shares outperform bonds? I have unashamedly borrowed the following extract from a recent blog by an American blogger called Cullen Roach. Why do certain asset classes perform the way they do? One of the reasons gleaned from long-term studies is that stocks have historically outperformed bonds, not necessarily over the course of a year or even a decade, but over the long run, stocks have beaten bonds. Why is this? The answer is simple. If a lender agrees to lend his money to someone at, say, 5%, then they probably have a strong belief that the borrower can return better than 5% with it. Not only that, but the borrower believes that as well. In the aggregate, it makes sense that both parties will be right. It's a win-win. While it's true that the lender would be fine with the money not coming from future cash flow, they'd probably feel a lot better than it does. This comes back to my point about the difference between equity and assets. An asset is just a thing like gold or copper or even a house. But equity is a working business that takes assets to make a product. Copper is just a rock. Uh, Okay, an element. It just sits there. In 1,000 years, it's still the same thing. Only when people come along can copper be employed to do something useful. A bond is an asset as well. Remember that a stock can buy a bond, but a bond can't buy a stock. You can form a company that does nothing but buy bonds and then float stock to fund your operations. You can use the dividends from the bonds to buy even more bonds. In fact, you can take it one step further and borrow money to buy more bonds. Of course, you'd want to borrow at the lowest possible rate in the short term and invest at the highest possible rate in the long term. Another name for this bond business is called a bank. My point is that equity is completely different from other classes of investments. It's the only one that captures human ingenuity, which is the ultimate asset. Now, I don't necessarily agree completely with what Cullen Roach says, Every asset class, such as equities, bonds, commodities, and even cash, does have its day. It depends which stage of the economic cycle we have reached, especially the rate of economic growth and inflation. There have been long periods during which bonds have outperformed other assets, equities, for example. But over the long term, equities outperform all other assets for the reasons given by Cullen Roach. His words have particular resonance right now. We've been through a torrid period of time over the last 10 months with the coronavirus pandemic and over the last four and a half years with post-Brexit uncertainty. But things are certainly looking a lot more positive now. There is a lot of government financial support which typically precedes a growing stock market. The UK stock market has been under a hangover ever since Brexit, but there is now light at the end of the tunnel. So if you share my optimism, do invest in UK shares. The best way to do it, of course, is to invest in the CCM Intelligent Wealth Fund, managed by our sister company, Minerva Money Management, and or our newly launched discretionary fund management service with Transact. You know it makes sense. Thank you for listening to today's episode. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to share it with your friends and family. For more information, head to www.wealthandtax.co.uk.